I'm Anita Pace, and I'm a choreographer. I have typically worked with a lot of artists and musicians, and I typically like that forum. I was working on a piece of choreography for a festival. I went to my friend Jim Shaw, who is, was a good friend, and he and I danced with another choreographer from CalArts, so there's all connection. And I said to him, I want some costumes that would have this kind of guttural look to them, kind of meshy. He said, well, you shouldn't come to me. You should go to Mike Kelly. I didn't know who he was. And so we met for a drink at the Formosa, had an amazing discussion, and I was really shocked at how much he knew about dance. So that was great, and we, that was a wonderful connection that not only led to some work together, but we also became partners. He always had you know, this mixture of uh, in yin and yang of his own body. He was smaller when he was growing up. He, he liked to be expressive with his body. He was really extreme with his clothing. And you know, I just think he could adapt to movement as being a form of communication as well as art. The first collaboration was Pansy Metal Clovered Hoof, um, 1989. He had created 12 silk scarves. And each one of them had these images that were iconistic of like what you would see in a high school yearbook, you know, like a corn cob pipe, but you know, he would call it like Master Dick, so he would modify it. One of them actually had a penis on it, one of them had his face, you know, one of them had a potato print. So very juvenile, but you know, he built them into these beautiful silk banners. So when he was showing them at Rosamund Felsen around that time, um, he was talking with her about what should we do. And I don't remember if it was me or it was him, but we both thought, like, we should dance in them, you know? So we took banners, and one was on the front, was on the back, and the girls were in underwear, and the boys were in underwear, but the boys had boots, and the girls had bells, and we created a fashion show. So that was our first collaboration. And it was, we wanted it to be very, you know, extreme, and the dance would be built on fashion modes, but would have a rock club feel to it. So there was a lot of stumping and head banging. So we got, we got dancers that had really long hair, so they could flip their hair a lot. And, Stomp. It was really beautiful. And I did the next piece, I think it was 1990, called Blonde Condition. It was a piece that I did based on my Mormon background. I had Mike walk out reading these aphorisms like, you know, if, you're, if you live in a white house, your children will be blonde. So he came out and just said them in his theatrical way, and it was, it was very, very funny. So we did Beat of the Traps in 1992. And that work came about, actually, I was working, like I said, I had this sort of parallel world with other artists and musicians, and I, I approached Stephen Prina, who had written this piece of music, Square Root Function, function too. It's just two, like, drums and snares um, playing together, and I asked him if I could choreograph something to it, and told Mike about it, and he was like, I've always wanted to do a drum piece, and I'm like, well, you should join us, and we'll do it together. So it just exploded from then. <laughs> picked um, four rock songs. One was from The Who, Blue Cheer, Jimi Hendrix, and uh, Led Zeppelin. And he had drummers extract the score of just the drums. So we had two drum kits on stage. We had two dancers. We had an actor and a singer, which was Steven. And then we um, had a cacophony kind of ending where we had a Albert Eiler and a Captain Beatheart song being played for the two drummers, and then I choreographed to a combination of that. And then interspersed, it was a very long piece, about an hour and 20 minutes, was whatever the top pop single was of the week, Stephen would sing it, and then we would either just play the B-side, depending on what we wanted to do, or we would have a dance to it. So there was like 10 elements to it. In 1995, we created Pole Dance. And Pole Dance was a collaboration between Tony Ausler, Mike Kelly, and myself. They were in CalArts together. In 1975, they made this score and they were using poles in it. So I found a lot of poles and I tried to look at that score and figure out um, how that flowed together. It, it ended up being kind of quite a poetically nice piece. We were all very surprised at the end that it ended up being um, you know, quite beautiful to watch. And then the last one was 1999. There's two titles to it. One title that deals with the Harry Harlow experiments that were done with monkeys. And the monkeys were given two things to love. One was a metal cage or a soft toy. He had actors who were therapeutically dealing with the idea of this modeling of your behavior based on your love, comfort. And I choreographed a Martha Graham sort of piece through the midst of 
the trauma-related um, movements of a monkey and a couple of actors. I think Mike really had a great sense of humor. And having you know, the ability to um, be fearless in designing work that was, in his mind, hilarious and, and actually very juvenile on the same side, gave people a lot of entrance into his work. So I mean, I think there was this freedom that he gave himself.